We wanted to take a minute out of today's video to let you know today's video is actually sponsored by Tommy John. Now Tommy John makes some of the highest quality products I own and if you guys can't tell, I love these pair of pajamas. You probably see me wearing them, at least the top, every morning because they're super light, they're stretchy, they're comfortable, you can tell they're high quality and my favorite part is that like, there's immense mobility. If I had to like fight somebody off in the middle of the night, these are the pajamas I would want to be wearing. Tommy John set out to make people feel comfortable in their true selves with their underwear and apparel, and they seriously nailed it. Comfort is at the core of their clothing, and they're our favorite for lounging at the end of the day and through the night. Their clothes are soft, supportive, breathable, and premium quality. We mix and match their styles for perfectly comfortable combinations. So I know that I said the mobility and flexibility and like comfort of the clothing is actually my favorite feature, but that might have been a lie. So they make these boxers, and I'm sorry if this is TMI, I'm not wearing them, so I'm not showing you guys while I wear them, but for men, the fly is vertical instead of sideways. And just let me tell you, it's an absolute game changer. If you guys are interested in trying out Tommy John, we highly recommend them. We actually love their clothing. And right now you guys will actually get 20% off and free shipping if you click the link in our description and use code Trent Alley. I wanted to say thanks again to Tommy John for sponsoring today's video. Hi, what are you doing? Are you ready for breakfast? <gasps> We are just waking up to a not bright and not sunny, but also a not snowy morning. So I'll take what I can get. It poured rain last night and things are muddy, super muddy. I mean, really the only issue is that we covered up all of the wood when it snowed because we didn't want the wood to get wet because a lot of those like two by boards will warp and twist and do all kinds of crazy things when they get wet. So uh, we didn't cover anything up. It wasn't forecasted to rain last night. And I think like midnight, it just like kind of started sprinkling. And I was like, oh, it'll be fine. It's just a couple sprinkles. And then within like 20 minutes, it was like, <gasps> like actually coming down. And I was like, okay, everything's wet. But it should dry out pretty quickly today. I don't think it's gonna keep raining. I'm just really hoping for some sun to get this moisture out of here, you know? Yeah, a sunny day would be nice. <laughs> So it is turning out to be a beautiful day. It was kind of cloudy and a little bit wet this morning, but now the sun has come out and everything is looking great. Actually, yesterday was Sunday, and I spent a little bit of time working on Rudolph, or the red Tacoma that we bought that's absolutely totaled. It's really imperative that we get it off of the street, and so uh, I spent a little time working on it yesterday. In the engine bay, you can see here the radiator support, the inner fender and the outer fender, everything is just kind of smushed. The radiator uh, reservoir is broken. The radiator itself is intact and not actually leaking any coolant. But there is this little fitting right here. Now I already made this fitting because the battery was not bolted down and it actually broke this fitting. So this fitting actually goes to the transmission. So automatic transmission fluid goes through that side of the radiator in and out and then it comes onto the front into a uh, uh, automatic transmission fluid cooler. So as soon as that uh, battery broke that fitting off, the transmission pumped all of its transmission fluid out of that broken fitting. So there's no transmission fluid in the transmission, which means it won't drive because it's pneumatically powered. So I've got to fill it up with transmission fluid. now. In a lot of like domestic vehicles and most automatic transmission vehicles, there's a dipstick where you can check the level of the trans fluid. There's a fill point, not on this transmission. You literally have to crawl underneath the truck. You have to take out a fill plug and then you have to have some type of pump or nozzle that can pump transmission fluid into the transmission. So basically today I'm gonna to be crawling underneath this thing. I'm gonna be taking that plug out, trying to fill it up with transmission fluid, starting it, running it. Hopefully I can get enough fluid in there that this thing will actually move for me. Now, this is what the front tire looks like. I'm not super concerned about it. All I need to be able to do is steer it and like limp it into the driveway and up in front of the house. Yes, it's gonna be a lawn decoration for a little while, but 
that's okay. I just really hope I can get enough fluid in this thing to get it working, and then once I do get fluid in it, I hope that it actually will drive and roll for me, so. Fingers crossed. So this is gonna be really ugly. So I just need to get enough in there that I can actually start it up and make it drive. Once I can make it drive, bada bing, bada boom, I'm gonna get it up in the driveway. We're gonna call it a day, but hopefully I can do this. I'm all the way under here on the passenger side, and if you look all the way up here, that little hole right there, that's where the fill plug is for the transmission. So I'm gonna get my little transfer pump and some fluid and I'm gonna start pumping fluid into here. And hopefully in no time, there's gonna be enough in there that I can start it and actually get this thing to start moving around. All right, this is my transfer pump. And one of these is gonna suck and one's gonna blow. And that one blows. And that one sucks. So this is gonna go inside the thing of uh, transmission fluid, and this one's gonna go inside the transmission. And hopefully this just goes quickly and seamlessly and I don't make a huge mess. We're dripping fluid. Normally, dripping fluid would be a bad thing, but in this case, it means we are full, baby. So I got two full gallons of ATF into the transmission before it started draining out. When it starts draining out, that usually means it's at least full enough to start running it and getting uh, uh, ATF to go through all of the lines. So now I've just got to get it started and start pumping the transmission fluid. Hopefully it fills up, it doesn't leak anywhere, and I can start moving this thing. And we got enough. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, just a little bit of love right there. We're idling at 900 RPMs. So let's try this. Oh, it's lugging down. Neutral. Revving up. Dry. Oh, it's trying to move, dude. Dude, this it's gonna go. I'm really excited about this, and in order to move this, I'm definitely gonna have to go and get Allie. She's gonna have to like kind of guide me and watch me, watch me drive this. Oh, dude. I think it's gonna go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I need you to come help. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> okay, I don't know how much Trent has caught you up to speed here, but Old Red has just been sitting in the road for the last like week because not only is it totaled, but uh, it's out of transmission fluid, it doesn't run, we need to get it off the road, and uh, I have very little faith in its abilities right now. I have total faith in Trent and his mechanic abilities, but this car is a disaster. I don't know what we've gotten ourselves into, and if he can make it run today, I will be thoroughly impressed. <laughs> this is ridiculous. There's no way this can drive. <laughs> Go nice and slow. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, I was uh, not really expecting that. It looks like Mater from Cars. Yeah. It's just good. like falling apart. But it did it. It did it. See all the steam coming out of there? Yeah. It could be a blown head gasket and that could be coolant. That would be really bad. The good news is my little fitting that I made is working perfectly fine. There is one little tick. Basically what you're saying is we bit off more than we can chew again. This is a mouthful. I could chew it. So it's not gonna be comfortable. <laughs> and there it rests. And that's where it's gonna be parked, probably until we have like some type of garage that I can pull it into and I can start completely tearing it apart because let's face it, I have to take the complete front end, cut it all off, take everything apart, put a new radiator. I mean, there's like, there's some extensive work that needs to be done on that thing just to get it like running again. And then we're gonna turn it into a rock crawler. So there's at least an all winter project. And hopefully by next spring, We'll be taking that thing to Moab and having some fun in it. But anyway, like I said, sun's out. We're about to start working. Brandon will be here in a minute and we're gonna start framing again. Before we get started building outside today, we have a couple, actually just one more thing we really have to finish in the wardrobe upstairs. The final drawer slide needs to be installed. 
And I'm excited because it's where my pants go and I haven't had anywhere to put my pants recently. No pants parties for you. No pants parties. Joel's helping. done yeah but is it good it's good enough <laughs> just like that our bedroom is officially done dana just pulled up brandon is running a little late this morning but we are going to get started oh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna teach you how to use a nail gun. Mm -hmm. Said it before, this is a real gun. Very dangerous, be very careful. It has safety features, but you can still shoot a nail into your leg or something like that, so be mindful. But basically, you wanna just stick it down, push, stick it down, push, and you wanna go back and forth, kind of like you're sewing. I know you like sewing. I do love me some sewing. <laughs> we were camping a couple weekends ago, and around the campfire, we had this discussion, how does a sewing machine work? And none of us knew, but all of us had ideas. And the more we talked about it and thought about it, the more we realized sewing machines are magic, and we have no idea how they work, and it's unbelievable that they exist, and all of our ideas were complete ludicrous. I saw some stuff about how it worked, but I'm still in disbelief. <laughs> Put pressure down with your left hand. Left on the hand. back, yeah. yeah yep. put the, so put your weight on it when you pull it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You hear how the sound is different? Yeah. Perfect. How's that feel? Hard. Hard? Yeah, I don't like nail guns. I hurt my hands. Oh, so we're trusting this level now. Yeah, it was fine last time, remember? Okay. The house is a hair out of square. It's this level's fault, not ours. <laughs> Hold that. You're in full contractor attire today. Oh yeah. Looking like you know what you're doing. Uh, pretend every once in a while. <laughs> How are we looking? Wow, try it, look at that. Yeah, it could be better. Barely, it's like pretty dead on. It's the best level thing so far. <laughs> cool, we have a bunch of um, renovations. I don't know what we're calling it, like changes that we're making to our garage plan. They're still in process and they haven't been actually drawn up or submitted Just for approval. We're kind of winging it. We have, we're basically going off like the, it. we're going off about? the plans that we already have Allie approved. says we're winging it when we're doing things that we know what we're doing. Don't say we're winging it. We're not winging it. I know exactly what we're doing. There's no winging it here. Only I can say we're winging it because we I'm the only one that knows. are building what has already been approved, but we're trying to like think ahead and try to incorporate the changes that we are planning for no, as well. No, we're it's not very close to doing that. Okay. <laughs> Don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> we're building the structure that is approved and there's gonna be additions that are added to the structure, but the original structure is not going to change and we're approved to build this structure. So that's what we're building right now. There is a man door right here. And basically I was just getting our trimmer studs kind of mocked up so that we can throw the beam on there once this wall is built to that point. We have to make a beam pocket in this door over here. So I still have to do put two king studs on this side and then our end panel that's gonna be a two by eight for this wall. But now that Brandon is here, we can actually start framing this wall and get it completed over to there. And then we'll be able to throw up the beam on there. The only problem is the rest of this wall, the wood is gonna be delivered later today, says BMC, so. Beam pocket sounds like ridge beam, sounds like crane, sounds like travel. None of that, right? No, okay. you have PTSD. I do have PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a very small beam. It's okay. just two two by tens. It's very, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, okay. Man sized beam. Okay. <laughs> Tell me. We need that yoga. Daily morning yoga for all these guys. I love that you make fun of me for break dancing and you want us to do yoga. Yes! Wow. <laughs> Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> did you know he took break dancing classes? Oh yeah. I think I lived with Brandon when I did that. <laughs> Just no shame? <laughs> I don't think uh, break dancing is something you should be ashamed of. 
You're right. It's like a very small percentage of the population that can do that stuff. Right. And when right. anybody sees it, they go, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Why would you be ashamed of that? Have you retained any of your breakdancing skills? Yeah, just shows them right now. Can we, can we see a preview? Nope. You guys are disbelievers. <laughs> I, anything. I think you're too old to do it. <laughs> no. When was the last time you tried to do it? A while ago. <laughs> What are you doing? Passing the time. <laughs> All right, so we are doing uh, kind of a complicated corner here because we have to make this beam pocket for the man door right there, but we made one perfect cut and then we realized that it was wrong. No. So we've got to adjust that cut, make it a little bit bigger, then we're going to build our beam that's going to go over that door, slap it in, and then I think we're probably going to start blocking this wall because that's about all we have left to do. Okay. This is your third chewy bar of the day. I got goldfish in my car. <laughs> what are we working with? Chocolate chip? Yeah. Yeah, I know I that like color. The peanut butter one. <laughs> nice. That's a beam. This is the beam pocket. Uh, there's no, it's yeah. not a beam pocket. That's a beam pocket. Oh. That's a beam. So we made ourselves a nice little box beam here. Our uh, headers they go over the doors and the windows, I believe. <laughs> The headers that go over the doors and the windows have to be two two by tens. So we made this little box beam. I'm gonna slap it up in there, get all this stuff nailed together and square. Then we can put the rest of our king studs up over there. And then we'll be ready to start blocking this back wall. And once it's fully blocked, hopefully BMC will be here with the rest of our wood so we can continue with this wall. Or we'll just take lunch. Or we'll just take lunch. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Joel's here for, really. <laughs> Always. Can you lift that high? Probably. Get it up above your head. Whoa. I'll drop it. I messed it up. Don't say that. We're doing all right. Uh. The beam is in. It's square enough to pass inspection and uh, fit a door. And that's all we're worried about right now. Oh my gosh. It's a good thing no one's living in this. Yeah, stick framing walls is more difficult than building them on the ground. Let's just put it that way. And uh, these little differences and little issues that we make a big deal of don't really matter. And the people that say that they matter are just being sticklers. So that's you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I just wanted to tell you about my first impressions of the site. Look at the camera, don't look at me. Just wanna tell you about my first impressions of the site. It's going a lot faster than I thought it would. Already 10 times stronger easily. Uh, I moved plywood for like four hours yesterday. We already got two walls up. I thought we were gonna be here for at least like a couple of weeks before we got a wall up. The question is, are you enjoying yourself? Getting paid. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Oh, come on, bro. This happened with the really big wall that we built when we were using the LSL like blocking. And I can't tell you exactly what's going on, but if you cut all the blocks at the same size and you start sticking them in, you end up with some that are like, you have to wedge them in and then the studs are bowed and it's just a mess all around. It's how things become more than a hair out of square. Yeah, they start out that way, <laughs> unfortunately. This wall looks great and all the blocking is in place. It might be a little bit out of square, but we're not even gonna focus on that right now. Now we're just waiting for BMC to come deliver the rest of the lumber so we can start framing up the next wall. I think for now, we're kind of in like a forced break situation. So we might take a little bit of a lunch break and hopefully BMC shows up soon. I know Joel has been waiting for me to say those words since he got here this morning. So it is time. Trent's like favorite food in the world is pizza. He could eat it every day. If you're in Salt Lake City and you're looking for pizza, although Marco's is a very like reliable, it's good garbage pizza. It's, good garbage pi it's pretty good. The pie pizzeria is for sure the best. It's a little bit pricier, but their options are incredible. Their ingredients are really good. And the pizza always tastes unbelievable. We uh, 
took a break and ate lunch, which is always a big mistake because now we all want to take a nap. <laughs> and we don't have any lumber to build these other two walls, so we're probably going to have to wait until tomorrow to build the walls. Well, actually, tomorrow we're going to the shop, so we're going to have to wait until the next episode to actually continue framing the garage. But we did make some good progress. Those two walls are basically fully framed. I'm not going to sheathe anything until we have all four walls built and I know that they're all square and plumb and true because if I sheathe something and then we have to rack it or twist it or move it, that could be an absolute disaster. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and wait on that. That's probably uh, all we're going to do today is probably just clean up our tools and wait for this lumber delivery. Well guys, we're waking up to some good news and some bad news. The bad news is uh, our lumber never got delivered yesterday. We waited around and it never showed up. We called this morning and we were like, hey, what's going on? And they were like, oh yeah, um, it's coming this morning. Sorry, nobody let you know that it wasn't gonna come last night. So it was a good thing we ended up just going rock climbing with Joel and Addy and had a really fun evening and didn't wait around much longer for the lumber that was not even on its way. So the lumber is coming this morning. The bad news is we're not gonna be here for it because we have a bunch of work to do today. The other bad news is that last night we got home from rock climbing and I guess the dogs had gotten into something like grass or something during the day and Frank had pooped everywhere. And I mean, and threw up. And threw up everywhere, which is fine. Like I'm not mad at him for being sick. The problem is he was trying to like hide it. Like, you know how sometimes dogs like go into a corner to throw up or poop because they know they're not supposed to do that in the house. And he threw up on one of our vents. Yeah, one of the like, you know, HVAC vents. And the throw up went down inside the HVAC vent and it's on like a very tight angle where you like can't really get your hand down there, so probably need to have somebody come and clean the ducks <laughs> at some point but we cleaned out as much as we could it doesn't really smell anymore but it's gross it was a it was a mess to come home to let's just put it <laughs> that way but that is yesterday and it is behind us today is a new day and actually I have something really exciting going on this afternoon but first we're gonna go in for a little team huddle a little bit of planning and a meeting at Mountain Made Vans Mocha. Ah, beautiful. Really the only good thing about running late in the mornings is that I don't have to make coffee. We can just stop and get coffee and it's a sugary, delicious coffee. Hello. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Whoa, this is cool. Yeah. It's looking more and more like we're a legit company. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> Feels very professional in here. It? Yeah. It kind of like, you know, a shop. A real shop, like yeah, an actual business, not yeah, just don't like. don't work off the floor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the action rolling. shot of the day. <laughs> Probably the most productive thing I'm gonna do. <laughs> Better not be. Uh, might be. What do you think of the new shelves, Trent? I think they look great. Don't they? Look like a professional warehouse right? in there. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. We got these big, tall, like warehouse shelving so that we can store a lot of stuff over here and not take up so much space. And we also have this big open space to work now. And we're also like all mercedes out in here right now. Yeah, we got, I mean, Pamela's outside because we just went and picked her up from the dealership. She was getting some final tweaks and like an oil change and an alignment and everything for the new buyer who's coming to pick her up in like a week or two, which is sad, but we're not gonna talk about it. Things are coming along here. Bryce is eating in the corner because he doesn't want to be loud on camera. Yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> talking over here <gasps> hey little boy hi <laughs> did you have a nap we're having a team meeting this morning and doing some strategy mapping and planning for the sprinter build um, and it's really exciting it's coming together quickly which is 
um, a huge goal for us is to like become a little bit more efficient and faster in our process, but never sacrifice on quality or craftsmanship or creativity. And this van is going to be gorgeous and probably done in the next couple months. So if anyone is interested, all the details are in the description. You can always send us an email at sales at mountainmadevans.com. This is gonna be a really cool van for some very lucky customer. Joe's actually really big in here. Yeah, the walkway is actually a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I think yeah, the gonna walkway be, is legit. It's gonna be beautiful. The layout on this van is super different than what we've built before. I'm excited. This is nice. As you guys saw in a previous video, we went and visited Happy Jack and we put in an order. And as soon as that Happy Jack shows up, we can start framing out where the Happy Jack is gonna go and start making the bed platform. It's not mounted, but that's the jump seat. It's gonna hold two people, it can hold a baby, it can hold whatever you need and it's gonna be mounted up front. And then right behind that is gonna be the nature's head cabinet and then some drawers with our electrical cabinet below there. And then on the other side is gonna be the little kitchen galley with a cooktop on top of the uh, the fridge. Look at our fridge. It's a cool fridge. The one thing that is also very different about this van is normally we install propane for the furnace and for the stovetop and the oven, and this van has no propane. It's an induction cooktop that runs on electrical and the heater. It's a Wabasto again, right? It's a Wabasto diesel heater. A diesel yeah. heater that runs off the, the diesel gas tank. So no propane, which is kind of nice. We're experimenting with different layouts. Dang, I like this fridge. Yeah, it's nice. Is there a freezer in there? Yeah, it's, super, it's, like, it's like the freezer that we had in our original fridge. Our criteria for any fridge-freezer combination is that the freezer must be able to hold a pint of ice cream. Is that Ray Charles? What up, dog? <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi. How you doing? Granola bar number two. Oh shit. I'm hungry. <laughs> Don't shame me. All this talking got me all starved. Someone told me that trust players expend like, was it you? Like 2,000 calories a game or something yeah. ridiculous, some like enormous number. Um, and now I always like equate it to whenever I'm editing and really hangry and cranky. It's like, cause I'm like, really thinking hard. So when you guys are having team meetings, you gotta eat those granola bars. These guys are uh, really knocking it out of the park. I'm super impressed with the way this thing's turning out. <sighs> I guess we'll be here next week for Mountain Made Mondays. And this thing will be looking a lot different. See you later. Love y'all. Love, Love you. Bye guys. It's such a different climate down here. It feels like absolute summer. I'm so grateful for the gorgeous weather living up in the mountains where it's cold and snowy so much of the year. Honestly, we love it. We love the snow and like the winter wonderland vibe that it comes with, but it also really makes us appreciate those warm sunny days. So I'm just basking in this weather today. And I think this afternoon, everybody's gonna get a little bit of sun. All right, so we are here at Russell and Leslie's house. Russell and I have switched into our Superman outfits. We are getting ready to go play golf. Now we're gonna be playing with Brandon and our friend John today, and we're gonna be playing in a tournament. It's a scramble, so there's not a lot of pressure on everybody, because we'll explain what a scramble is later, but we're about to take off. Are you excited? Absolutely. <laughs> ready to go. Are you gonna win is the question. Win. Well, <laughs> we're playing to win. <laughs> playing to win. <laughs> We've got a strategy. We're going to stick to it. And I think, I don't know how good the people we're playing against are. So I'm not going to say anything foreshadowing, but we're going to do our best. Trent and my dad have actually been um, strategizing and preparing for this golf tournament for a few weeks now. They're really excited. Like Trent said, they're playing with Brandon and our other friend, John. It's a group of four really good golfers and I think they're gonna have a lot of fun. They're all pretty competitive, so it'll be interesting to see how they do because I know they would all like to win, but uh, we'll see who they're playing against. While they're gone, I get to have a wonderful day with my mother who's in town and we're gonna get um, a couple errands done and just kind of catch up on things that I never have time for while I'm working. Um, 
So this golf tournament is great for them, but it's also great for me because it gives me and my mom a little bit of time to hang out together. So uh, Trent, are you excited? I'm really excited. We're almost here. We just saw some other guys in a car that have got like some golf hats on and it's you know a pretty good chance that they're also heading to this tournament. So we were like, you know, kind of mean mugging them and, and then they took off at the light and they were trying to accelerate faster than us and we didn't take the bait. We just we're gonna beat them on the course. We're not we're, gonna We're gonna keep it cool. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep it cool. Uh, John and Brandon are gonna be here at the course and uh, we're gonna check in and tee off in about 30 minutes. All right. Ready to scramble? Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. you guys probably remember John. We went on a little overlanding trip with him last year and the Forerunners, and we had a great time, and yeah. today we're going to win this tournament, right? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just like we won on that uh, that road to nowhere, uh, Ponds Peak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is a nice straight up hill. Hello, everybody. Ready to win? Absolutely. They just sent us off. This is a shotgun start. So everybody starts at the same time from a different hole. So there's uh, got to be like 30 groups of people out here. We're heading to hole six. We're going to be teeing off here in a minute. Everybody's really excited and, and we're ready to win. All right, so we've been out here for about four and a half hours, oh, six minutes shy of four and a half hours. And uh, this is our last hole, the 18th hole. We are negative eight on this course. And uh, I just hit this chip and it's like a foot away from the hole. We almost a made foot. it in. We would have been negative nine. Woo! Saved it. We're our finish for the day. Now we're gonna go turn in our scores and see how we did. How did you guys do? We did, oh. we finished at eight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's still good score though. Yeah, yeah. Bug, yeah. Nice. bug, birdie. Yep, thank you. Okay, well that was a lot of fun. <sighs> The heartbreak. <laughs> oh, I think we did fantastic. We did great. I mean, there was esprit de corps, there was comradeship, there was fun, <laughs> there was uh, a couple of good drives and putts. Yeah. Uh, so I think everybody contributed and felt good. And a gorgeous day. Honestly, yeah. it's a gorgeous day. We couldn't ask for a better round. We all felt like pro golfers because we, you know, we shot negative eight, which is like extremely hard to do. And uh, there's people that shot negative sixteen, twice as good as us. So. Better luck next year. <sighs> well guys, I just barely made it back home. We had quite a long day. Allie wasn't really there to, to cheer us on, but I know she was there in spirit. She sent us a text when we were like <laughs> close to the end of the tournament and she was like, the suspense is killing me. How are you guys doing? And we only had a couple holes left, but I was like worried to text her and say like, we're doing great. We might win. <laughs> I really and thought you were gonna win. <laughs> I thought we were gonna win too, but it just goes to show how out of touch I am uh, with the reality that I'm not that good at golf. That's okay, that's so. what practice is for. Yeah, it was a lot of fun though. Good, good, I'm glad. We had a good time. And my mom and I had an absolutely amazing afternoon together, just hanging out, getting errands done, like nothing special, but just spending time together. It was really, really wonderful. And when I pulled into the, the driveway tonight, I did see that our lumber got delivered. Yes. Which means tomorrow, in the next episode, we're gonna be back to framing. We're gonna try and knock out both of those walls, get all four walls up. Once they're all up, we can start sheathing them. Construction is underway. And it's going quick. Yeah, I'm it's really nice. excited. It's probably going too fast. We're gonna run out of things to do, but <laughs> we can always find something to do. Yeah. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure, make sure you guys show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.